Okay, today I'm going to go over how to make decisions under uncertainty, and this is something that happens quite off, often um, in your life when you're trying to make some kind of decision. So this is a very helpful, helpful um, demonstration. It, it's uh, so we're going to talk about making decisions under uncertainty using Excel, and we're going to use four methods. Okay, this example is taken from. The textbook authored by Stevenson, Operations Management, 12th edition, Chapter 5S, which, by the way, is a very good textbook for reference if you're interested in operations production and operations management. Very good reference textbook to have on your desk. Okay, so if you want to do this along with me, uh, pause the video and open up Excel and copy this down, and then you can work it along with me. Okay, so you should have paused the video. And now, so let's go ahead and proceed to solve this problem. So we're going to solve the, we're, so we have a facility, we're, we're a company, we want to decide, we, we have three choices. We're going to either build a small facility, a medium facility, or a large facility. And we have three different possible states of nature. Uh, you could have low demand, moderate demand, and high demand. And this is the payoff, the present value of, of these decisions and in each of these states of de states of nature, depending on what happens. So if I build a small facility, no matter what happens, I'll probably the, the, you know that investment is going to be worth ten million dollars. If I build a, med a medium facility, then if I have low demand, it's going to be a seven, or moderate or high, that investment is going to be worth twelve. If I build a large, then I could lose four million if it's low demand. Uh, if it's moderate demand, I could make two. And if it's high demand, the present value of the investment would be $16 million. So you can see, you know, you can kind of look at it yourself and logically, depending on what your risk preference is, you might say, well, I want it small because it's $10 million and I'm guaranteed. Or you might like risking and say, well, I could make $16 million. So maybe I'll go for that. So, so there's a lot of ways you could just kind of look at it. But we're going to use these methodologies and, and see how they work out. Okay. So let's solve the first one. We're going to solve something called maximum uh, method. We're going to use something called maximum methodology. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this down here and just work with it. Okay. And for maximum, let me just drag the definition over here. If you're using maximum, you determine the worst possible payoff in each alternative. So this one, small, the worst mo possible payoff. What you could do, I could say, equals the minimum. And just highlight these three and hit enter. And I could just double click here on the bottom. So this is my formula minimum. So I'm telling Excel, I'm using a formula here. I'm telling it equals the minimum parentheses and highlighting these three. And then hitting enter. You don't have to do close the parentheses because it knows this is a built-in Excel formula. You don't really need to close the parentheses. And, and then you hit enter. And it says, well, the minimum of that is 10. Of course, there's 10. So that has to be the minimum. Now, I don't have to do that formula again. I can just simply go to the bottom right-hand corner until this turns into this little cross and double-click. It automatically finds the minimum in each one of these rows. So the minimum of medium is 7, and the minimum of large is 4. Of course, you could have done this by hand. But it's always nice to have Excel do this because that way it's automatic. So that's what we've done here. We've determined the worst possible payoff for each alternative. And then... And then we're going to choose the alternative that has the best worst. So I'm going to say maximum. So here I go equals max of these three. So I want the best payoff out of those. So the best payoff out of here is $10 million, which is that one, right? So so for my maximum payoff out of the out of the out of the worst payoff out of these would be the small facility, okay? So, uh, so that that's maximum. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Look at the definition if I went too fast. Uh, I read, I'm gonna key. I want I want this video to not last longer than uh, 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go kind of quick. So you can read that on your own. So now let's do the next one. Let's go. Uh, let's do B. Let's do the max and max. So max and max, let me just go ahead and copy this again. And max and max, and max I'll just drag that definition down here and we'll work it out the way it says. It says determine the best possible payoff 
and choose the alternate with that payoff. So now I'm going to do the maximum. So here I had did minimum, right? These were minimums. Now I'm going to do maximums. Okay, so I go equals max of these three and then copy that down. Okay, and again, we want to do the maximum. So I'm just going to copy. The beauty of Excel, since I've done this once already, I can just copy it down here. And since these are all relative, it's going to keep that formula. It's going to find the maximum of those three. So I kept it relative. So I know that that's going to be this one here. So in this case, I would want to build a large facility. Okay. Right. So here we found the, the best minimum. Here we found the best maximum out of each one of these alternatives. All right. So the next one we'll do is something called the Laplace. And let me copy this again. And let me drag the definition for the plus down here. So the plus, it says determine the average for each, each. Uh, you know, let me move this over like so it's in the same spot the other one was. Uh. Okay. I'll cut it. Oh, there we go. All right, let me merge a cell again. All right, so so now we want to do the average. So I'm going to go equal to average. Well, one way to do average, a quick way to do average on Excel, then I go up here to this auto sum, as long as you're on the home, I hit this drop down thing and I hit average. I could have typed average. And then Excel says, are these the three you want to average? If that is true in this case, so I'm just going to hit enter and copy that down. And now I want to make sure I take this out a couple places because it's probably rounding it. You know, averages, these are pretty easy because they're going to be whole numbers, but here it's doing some, some mathematical operations. You can see if I wouldn't have taken this out a couple places, I would have thought these are the same, but this one's actually a larger. So again, I want to find the maximum of those. So I'm going to copy this. And again, take this out a couple places. So that's this one. So in this case, the decision would be a medium. So, so far, these three, these three ways to solve under uncertainty, they all came with different answers, didn't they? So that could happen sometimes, right? All right, so now we're going to do the last one. And the last one is going to be maxim, mini max regret. And this is kind of the tricky one. But I'll go over it here and we'll kind of, you'll kind of see how it works. So I'll go ahead and copy this again. And let me drag this down so we can work with it right here. Okay. So maximum regret. You want to determine the worst regret for each alternative and choose the alternate with the best worse. This approach seeks to minimize the difference between the payoff that is realized and the best payoff for each state of nature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to copy this down again. I'm going to call these uh, regrets. Now I'm going to clear these because we're going to put something different in here. All right, so for regrets, you have, no, yeah, this is different because we're going to look in the columns, right? And what we want to do, we want to look at the highest, the best possible thing that can happen in each one of these states of nature and then subtract from that, the highest one, uh, how much I would regret if I went like this. So this is the best, so I'd regret zero here, right? Because if I chose that one, that would be the highest one. If I chose that one, I'd regret three. <laughs> And if I chose that one, I'd regret 14 because 10 minus a minus 4 is 14. So the way I do this, I could put a formula in here. I go equals the maximum because that's going that, that's what we're going to start with. And then since I'm going to copy this, I'm going to go here and hit uh, F4 to put dollar signs in front. And here, hit F4. But I'm going to take the dollar sign off because I'm going to copy this to the right. All right. 
So I wanted to copy this right, but I want it to stay on B44 to B46. Here I want C44 to C46. Here I want D44. That's how you do that. So that way when I copy it, the formula will stay correct. And then I want to subtract that from it. Okay. I'll let you look at that formula for a second. And so that means 10 minus 10 is 0. And if this is right, 10 minus 7 is 3. 10 minus a minus 4 is 4. And I can take this and go down to this little copy thing and copy it across to the right. So what's the highest here? 12. So highest here, 12 minus 10 is 2. 12 minus 12 is 0. 12 minus 2 is 10. And the highest here is 16. 16 minus 10 is 6. 16 minus 12 is 4. Or 16 minus 16. So it looks like it's correct. Okay. So, uh, so now we have my regrets. So, it's, so it says determine the worst regret for each alternative. So that's what we've done. Uh, and, from, and choose the alternative with the best worst. Okay. So, uh, so the best worst is going to be the lowest regret, right? Okay. So here we're gonna we're gonna choose uh, so these so we wanna pick the worst so I'm gonna go worst regret from each alternative, right? Does that make sense? So this is gonna be the worst regret. And so I'm gonna go equals the max of these. And I'll copy that down. And then I want to have the minimum here. So I'm going to go minimum, the best, worst. Remember, this is a regret. Okay. So I go equals minimum of these three. So my minimum, reg so remember, regret, you want it to be small. That's why it'd be best. So it's going to be this one. And I would choose medium. I know I kind of went, kind of, I kind of explained that a little bit weird, but if you kind of, if you didn't understand, maybe go back and look at it again. Let me go ahead and put this formula in here. Equals formula text. That way you have it. So that that formula is for that, right? And um, that way you have that. You can take a look at that formula. Uh, so, so these are these are uncertain because we have no probability what's going to happen, right? So if you had a 25% probability here, and you had a 50% probability here, and a 25% probability, let me just show you here. If you had if you had a little bit more certainty, you could do this. So you might say, well, um, let me move this down. So there's a 25% chance this would happen, and there's a 50% chance this would happen, and a 25% chance this would happen. Well, I could take this times this plus this times this plus this times that, and that would give me the expected value. Okay. Now, the nice thing about Excel, uh, to get to 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 do this times this and this times this and this times this, the quickest way I could do something called the sum product. So I go sum product. And I would take this array. Now I'm going to want to multiply this array times that and times that and times that. So I'm going to hit F4 because I want it to stay on there when I copy it. And then I'm going to sum product that times these. And that gives me an expected value of 10. 10.75. So in that case, I would pick this one. Okay. So this has a little bit more certainty because at least we have a probability of what's going to happen in each one of these states of nature. Okay. So that's kind of a, I guess that's a, we didn't, you know, that's just like a bonus problem here, but that's just to show you what to do here. So you just take the expected value. I'm going to put the formula in here. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Um, sometimes it's a lot easier to do things on Excel. Now I, I could have made this a little bit more automatic, but we're not, you know, you could actually have done this by hand and not had it automatic at all, but I'd like to at least put some formulas in here. Or if the things change, like if this was, if I change this to an eight, well then it's going to maybe come up with a different answer, right? So it's going to automatically do calculate some of these things for you.
All right. So anyway, hopefully that helps and see you next time.